through just the way you live. I think that's the most important part of evangelizing. You're not always going to be called to be a speaker. You're not always going to be called to be to do a podcast, but you are called to be a saint, and that's how you evangelize. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of PPK. It is just Meeks and I this week. What's up, Meeks? What's going on? We're gonna uh, we're gonna miss Keone this one for sure. We are missing Keone. Uh, if you recall, two weeks ago, because I know we we missed this last weekend. Two weeks ago, we uh, were preparing uh, for Keone's wedding, um, and Keone and his uh, lovely bride Michelle are uh, celebrating the honeymoon so keone's enjoying the married life he just entered into the sacrament of holy matrimony so uh our prayers and thoughts are with them too as they're chilling right now in cancun so um it's just going to be meeks and i figured we get together and uh we're still reeling a little bit from the weekend miko and ella flew in all the way from stews for a quick uh, quick trip out um but yeah we're here meeks right yeah, I mean, we, we kind of slack. We missed a couple episodes, uh, kind of on accident, and, you know, we didn't want to do three weeks, so this is, this is what you're going to have to get. This is what you're going to have to yeah. live, live with. You're going to have to live with us, too, while we're uh, trying to make it happen. So, um, inspiration, uh, really, this week um, is coming from me. We've been kind of talking about what we want to talk about, and I think we'll, we'll uh, once Keone gets back, we've got some other stuff we want to chat about. We're really going to talk about evangelization, um, that obligation and really the practicality of it all and i think part of it meeks that i was thinking about was really i think coming into this um really into county's wedding week week and weekend how it was just an opportunity to evangelize and we just kind of wanted to talk about those those points uh specifically now for those of us who are baptized and specifically confirmed catholics out there um, our catechism, paragraph 1285, tells us that we are more um, perfectly bound to the church through the sacraments, and we're strictly obliged to spread and defend the faith by word and deed. So it's, it's not optional, it's obligatory for us to evangelize. What say you, Meeks? Yeah, and I think, you know, we're going to get obviously into um, some of these examples of every, everyday evangelization, but... I find that the more you're into your faith and the more that you're diving deep, that evangelization almost comes natural and you're not almost purposely doing it. But when your life becomes around, uh, revolved around your faith or, you know, you're reading or you're just kind of becoming on fire about it, those are your conversations that you're going to bring up a lot of the times. And so I find that in a lot of my circles, I've almost like accidentally evangelized when I'm not someone... You know, we talk about a lot, like, Keone would be good for this episode because he's always talking to his coworkers, he's talking to anyone he can about, you know, I got this person to read this book, or I got this person. I've never been one that's, you know, great at that or really got out of my comfort zone. I'm very non-confrontational. I'm, I'm pretty introverted. And so I'm usually not great at that, but there's many times when you never realize the impact that you've had on somebody, just the way that you're living your life or just the conversation that you have with somebody. And it may not even be directly about the faith, but it's just the way that you go about your own business. And I think just developing friendships with people, sometimes you're going to go into conversations that you don't usually plan on having and they do happen and you end up evangelizing those people. So, you know, like I've said before, um, there's a lot of people who reached out to me watching this podcast that I had just haven't thought that would, but it's just me serving as some sort of witness not always the greatest witness but at least some sort of witness to these people and um even at francisco even at kathy disneyland itself i have mm -hmm. a lot of great conversations with people where obviously i don't have to evangelize in the way of bringing someone to the catholic church but still providing as some sort of witness as um you know we're all different examples we're all different instruments of god so even then i've had you know really great conversations where I brought some sort of light into something that someone hasn't seen, even though they're already very strong Catholic, uh, practicing Catholics. Yeah, I think um, one of the sayings that come to mind, which is uh, normally falsely attributed to St. Francis, speaking of Franciscan, um, is preach the gospel at all times and when necessary, use words. So to your point, Meeks, it's this uh, idea of living it first, right? Um, uh, Pope St. Paul VI 
uh, says in Evangeli Nuntiandi. It's an encyclical that he wrote on evangelization in the modern world. And he says in there that modern man more willingly listens to, to witnesses rather than teachers. And if they listen to teachers, it was because they were witnesses first. And so it just kind of hits home what you're saying, that our lives should speak to the reality of our faith, right? If we're living out our faith, people are going to notice that. And, um, or you hope that they notice that, right? And, and some are going to be attracted to it. Some are going to um, approach it in a way that it convicts them and they want to, they, that's the furthest thing they want in their life, right? So we've talked about this before in previous episodes where our very presence in somebody's lives and presence in physically in front of them should convict them in one way or another. Because we should be a reminder of either um, the life that they're living. So, you know, maybe they're edified and they're, they're encouraged, they're uplifted, or we're going to be a reminder of the life they don't live. Reminder of the fact that we probably serve two different gods. And I think about this in our modern world today, in our culture today, which is pretty much godless for the most part. Um, that's the life that we live. You're on a podcast. We're on a podcast that says priest, prophet, king, right? So it's very specific and intentional in that way. But in your everyday life makes people may think, you know, that, um, they don't know that aspect of, of it. So how do we want to go about in this episode as far as the practicality or even speaking to just the reality, for one, the obligation that we are called to evangelize, um, and two, um, what tips uh, can we give to our fellow viewers out there? This is obviously uh, a very blunt, I guess, way of doing so and saying, like, obviously, this is about evangelization. And so there's that aspect I think we're all called to do, obviously, maybe not on a social media or maybe not through a podcast, but on your own Instagram accounts, you should be saying similar things that we're saying or or posting things that are similar. There's evangelization in so many different ways, and I think social media is a beautiful one to do. As we talked about, you know, Kanye West and the revival, and there's so many artistic means that we could do it through. And like I said before, you know, when we were when um, me and my friend Christian had revival revival for heaven, and just you know, we just showcased and kind of brought through thrifted old thrifted jesus thieves and they had these really cool graphics and you know lord's gym you know he has the weight of uh weight of everyone's sins cross on his shoulders you know just awesome things like that that you can evangelize through and for each of our uh personal accounts i know that we do that and we we share you know certain pictures or quotes or um you know stories about saints that that the new uh young blessed carlo whatever his name is yeah, that carlo i mean just show, you know just reposting that yeah, just reposting that. I mean, that's a way of evangelization. Just in those small things. I mean, it's so much easier to do now than beforehand because of how easy we can communicate with each other. And like I was saying beforehand, um, just about everyday to- uh, topics. For instance, you know, my friend, my friend Christian was just telling me, you know, he was at one of our other friends' um, birthday parties and her birthday gatherings. We don't really have birthday parties. <laughs> You're a little too old for birthday parties, but that kind of idea. And um, and he's. Well, Christian was talking to our friend who also goes to, you know, Goodwills with us. And we, we spend a lot of time just, you know, when we drive to the to Goodwill and just kind of sit and thrift and just kind of hang out. And he's usually the quieter one. And so me and Christian will, like, usually have to drive conversations. And he'll kind of, he'll be spoken, uh, or he'll speak if he's spoken to kind of idea. Not much outside of that. And he was talking about how he's so grateful that he met me and Christian um, because he, like, we don't know how much we actually push him in his faith and like, not, this guy's not very, uh, not super emotional or outgoing or never really had that deep of conversations with them. But I think, like I said, once you're on fire and once you actually put faith as priority, you begin to talk about it and you begin to live about it. And even in those conversations when you're not talking to someone directly and they're still sitting back and listening, you're going to, you're going to convict them of something. And I think, that's something that just through faith, not through my own being, through the Holy Spirit, um, thanks be to God, a lot of people have felt that way through my own being, even though I haven't always prioritized my faith or I haven't always done these things. The Holy Spirit works through those graces. And for some reason, people are just going to be drawn towards that. I think that's why, you know, we wanted to start this podcast because I think, you know, a lot of people have been drawn towards you, Dad, or a lot of people have been drawn towards Keone. And for, you know, anyone that they're able to do that, like I said, through stories, through um, social media posts through just the way you live. I think that's the most important part of evangelizing. You're not always going to be called to be a speaker. You're not always going to be called to be to do a podcast, but you are called to be a saint. And that's how you evangelize. 
Amen to that. Yeah, I think let's, so. Let's go with that for a little bit because I think sometimes people have the idea that um, to be an evangelizer, right? Which we're all called to be. So being part, being a saint. So we're called the Great Commission. Jesus tells us in Matthew twenty-eight to baptize all nations in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them all that I have commanded you. Right. So. A lot of people may think that event to be an evangelizer, for one, you got to be a theologian or a philosophy major. Is that important? Sure, it is, right? You can't really um, give what you don't have. So it's important for each of us to continue to grow in the knowledge of our faith and to understand, um, you know, uh, philosophical concepts and theological concepts. But there's this other aspect of just where you see a lot of the evangelization efforts is really kind of in this one-on-one and everyday life um, interaction, you know, let's, let's just talk about even, I'll give you, and I wanted to kind of use this episode Meeks to kind of give just real practical examples of, okay, what does that look like in everyday life? So I'll give you a couple of examples personally, and then I'll kick it over to you for, and I'm gonna give you an example that wasn't even in me. So last week, of course, uh, you and your siblings, you know, uh, Bree, Jamie, they flew in, you guys flew in, Jamie was working remotely, right? So Jamie's literally sitting, you know, because we all had to kind of work remotely. Jamie's literally sitting at the in the studio at the podcast table doing his work meetings and he's got the backdrop here. And of course, the question that comes up from his coworkers is what? Dude, what's, where are you at? You in a cabin? What's, you know, what's going on? And he's like, oh no, this is, so the opportunity he had there was going, no, 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 it's just some backdrop. But no, he used it as an opportunity to go, actually, my brother-in-law and my father-in-law, they, they have a podcast. And so this is the, the room they're recording. I'm kind of using the table. Oh, for real? And then you start to hear the conversation. Oh, for real? What's their podcast? Well, you know, it really talks about the Catholic faith. And you know what? I'll shoot you in the chat the link to their, to their stuff. So most of the time when we're confronted with that situation, whether it be at work or at school, what do we do? Uh, we, we're going to kind of shy away. We feel uncomfortable because we, we don't necessarily know how to approach that. We don't know where people stand. You can kind of make a guess that most people aren't religious and definitely aren't Catholic if they are religious. And so there's a little bit of that discomfort there. So that's just one example that you have where Jamie, shout out Jamie, um, used it as an opportunity to kind of use it as an open door. Hey, yeah, here's the backdrop. No, I'm not in a cabin. Here's what it's used for, and it's actually about the faith. And now you, he just was in the role of an evangelizer. Yeah, I think we could go into really, um, I think just the idea that when you do evangelize in the speaking way or you're trying to be um, vocal or outspoken about the faith, I think it, how important is it to be knowledgeable first? Yeah. And I think that's one of the reasons why me and Keone, uh, we're so hesitant about doing podcasts or, or are so hesitant still about different, certain topics because we aren't knowledgeable. So we don't want to lead people astray. And yeah. I think a lot of, unfortunately, um, a lot of Protestants and even some Catholics aren't as knowledgeable as they should be about whether it's a history of the church itself, you know, that 1500 years that the Protestants love to forget about mm-hmm. or, or just, I mean, any, I mean, just the councils in the Catholic Church, right? I mean, there's so much rich history, so much meaning within the Mass, so much meaning within every sacrament that, that we have. And I think so many times we want to skip to uh, evangelizing, and we're so on fire, and, you know, we're saved by Jesus, and we want to talk, but sometimes we're leading in the wrong way. And I think, like, Prince like Kanye, and we and we all love Kanye for what for the good things he has, and, you know, he's going to have a lot of bad. Obviously, he's someone that's kind of had this reversion and been, uh, very on fire with the faith and he wants to spread the gospel and he wants to, you know, share the good news. But I think a lot of his uh, appeal is uh, very on this like emotional roller coaster, and he's kind of bringing in these choirs and just kind of this, this really feel good, you know, and, and, and we're, and he's on Joel Osteen's uh, talk show or whatever he calls it on the Sunday services. And <laughs> some of these things that you're not theologically formed yet. And so like, I like to say, you can't love what you don't know yet. And so, sure, you can, you know, we're all called to love God. We're in his children and in our hearts, we have that connection towards him. But I think you, once you start moving too quick and you want to start your own Sunday services and you're not looking at the history of Christianity, then maybe you are actually pushing people away from the Christian faith, even though you're having them go to your services or whatever it is, because they're not following the truth. I'm sorry, but like your praise and worship services aren't really the fullness of our faith. That's not what we're called to do. Uh, the, the gathering of, of people is only like half the true 
uh, I don't know, a part of being a Christian. It's not just about gathering with your brothers and, and sisters. It's not about just the peace be with you at mass. There's so much more to these things mm. where we actually worship the fullness of, of our faith, of the fullness of Christ. And so I think you have to watch for both. And I think in evangelization, you know, the, Pro- the Protestants are very good at doing this. They're very good at, at coming to you and appealing to you, looking like, looking like me, maybe a little even cooler than I do. And they, they have this appeal towards it. But I think, unfortunately, when you don't have that history and you don't have that true call to action and you're riding on the emotional roller coaster, it's going to be hard to truly have an impact. That's why you have to live it out yourself first. And you also have to learn first. Like, I, we're constantly trying to learn. I'm constantly trying to read. I'm, I'm constantly trying to better myself first and not just throw out Bible verses. Come on my way. Come on the Christianity way. Let me throw verses at you to make you feel, like, convicted. And it's like some of the stuff that's just very uh, – it's almost like a – I don't want to say manipulative, but it's almost like, you know, you're just throwing things out. You're not, where's the substance at? Where's the hitch? Like, you don't even know your own things. You just want to throw out verses that make everyone feel good mm. and kind of pat yourself on the shoulder because, you know, you know, let's pray because Jesus says in Jeremiah, boom. And it's just like, you yeah, know, your, and your I think when, when you're evangelizing, you got it. You got to really know your stuff. And, and that's why the most important part, like the best way to evangelize, what we kind of bring back the whole point is like living it out yourself. Mm-hmm. Well, I think it's you're bringing a, a, up a g- great point because I think Catholics and Protestants alike, when we only um, experience an emotional faith, well, we see what happens, right? You can, like you said, your your theology could be completely off, it can, off base. You can mislead people. I mean, we're in a time now where we see that. That's why we had that discussion where you know seventy percent of people don't believe in the true presence, right? When we talked about the true presence and and how these are. Catholics that go to mass every, you know, even the Catholics that show up in the pew with us that do go that their bodies are communicating one reality, but they don't even believe in that reality. And I think how many people who've been part of net ministries, right, or who are part of the life teen experience and what ends up happening is there's no um, solid ground of their faith. Sure, they have an emotional experience. Sure, they're on fire. Sure, they're involved in many things. But I have numerous after numerous accounts of people like that falling away from the faith because that's all they had was milk and honey and they had no substance to their meal when it came to understanding their faith. And then they either fell away themselves and they take a lot of souls with them because, you know, all of a sudden people had an emotional experience with them as being their bridge to God. And then they fell away from the faith. And now look at it. I mean, you see this in Hollywood, you see Christian singers that, um, you know, uh, I can't think of the gal, who was a Christian singer and then she kind of sold herself to the devil and uh, um, now is a mainstream and is like completely lost. Right. But she took souls with her because she didn't understand her faith. What is that? Uh, there's another group, a lead singer for, I think is it Hawk Nelson or one of those groups. Um, same thing. He doesn't, he's, he's agnostic now. He said he's atheist and like, what was, he was doing this whole Christian singing and like he had followers, people who bought the album and now they're, you know, because I don't know what his background is, but to your point, Meeks, um, when you're not rooted and grounded in faith, and if you're not separated from the emotional experience of faith, then what are you really rooted in? You know, you become the rocky ground. You're not the rich soil because nothing took root in you and you don't really understand your faith. So therefore it becomes all about the senses rather than, you know, is it hierarchical? Is it Eucharistic? Is it traditional in the sense of a, of a capital T where we have apostolic succession? Are we doing the things that, I mean, is it about the sacrifice, right? When we, we think about, there's a reason why we Catholics still have Jesus on the cross, right? Because it, there is no um, Easter Sunday without a Good Friday. And it's a reminder of that sacrifice that's made, uh, repre, you know, represented at every Mass. The best, the best uh, evangelists I think I've come across always have like a similar theme. And it's not only the knowledge, but you also have to have the vulnerability aspect, I think, is really huge. Mm-hmm. I think something that we try to do on this podcast is let you guys know that we're nowhere near where we're supposed to be. Mm-hmm. And letting you guys on that inside of we're human beings. And we're, if anything, we're telling you guys what we need to hear. Mm-hmm. And I think those are always the best ones. And it's like, you know, you could have the jokes and jokes is good. You know, we like to be funny. But if that's your main point, you're not going to stick. I'm sorry. Like, you're... you're you're going to stay in your middle school talks or if your one point is, you know, this or that, I think you have to have everything. And I think even when you are for someone evangelizing, if your way of doing it is through comedy, well, what happens? I don't think they're funny anymore. Where's the truth come out then? I think there's certain things. 
I'm not sure the audience would be for this because I, I, we're not talking to, I don't think Matt Fratt or some of these uh, people are watching this, but still, I mean, the idea is that, like those people who really, I think in your own day life, it's the people that are vulnerable. It's the people that are real. It's people that come meet you where you are. It's people that are actually knowledgeable and are able to give you answers to your questions mm. and, and able to just give you something deeper that, that it's not offered somewhere else. I think that's the issue is when you try to be too uh, funny or almost too tolerant or too uh, hip that you lose that, you lose that identity. You lose the ability to give someone something deeper than what someone else could offer them. And so when you appeal to that too much, you want to appeal to entertainment. You want to appeal to their senses or a sense of, like I said, tolerance. I think you start to lose the deeper appeal, right? And so that's something that, you know, we can kind of allude with the mass that we've talked about before. Mm-hmm. It seemed like you kind of appeal too much to the crowd. You lost that sense of like um, meta, the metaphysical realm. And you lost that sense of like uh, almost this complete offering towards that, which is, we don't have to get into that, but. I think it's just important to, you know, understand in your, in your own evangelizing, in your own way of life, like, uh, be intentional. And when you're trying to bring people to the faith, which is, you know, your duty, it's got to be something deeper than just kind of, you know, listening to oceans together or, you know, some of this other stuff. Yeah, I think you you bring up key points. I think we said this in one of the episodes where we said, when two things look the same, one becomes unnecessary, right? I mean, so, and we're going to go with the least path of resistance, whatever is the easier route. That's just who we are as human beings. We're fallen creatures. Yeah, I want to, we're going to try to duck and dodge things that are worth. Now we know, I mean, even when we talked about effeminacy, right? We talked about, you know, the the attachment to pleasure. So the inability to um, give up pleasure for the sake of doing what's arduous. And so that's kind of what we see in our world today is very effeminate in the sense of we're so attached to pleasure that we don't want to do the hard thing. And so I think that's what you see even with people's experience in the faith. But going back to it makes us we kind of round this, this episode out. I, I think you bring up such a great point is that you can't love that which you don't know. That's a very Thomistic way. St. Thomas would say that, right? The primary virtue is knowledge because the more you know something, the more you grow in love for that something. And you can't give what you don't have. And so you can have the best of intentions. You can be the best speaker. A lot of people come up, you know, I've been doing this kind of intentionally um, since 2015. And a lot of people come up to me after talks and be like, I want to do what you're doing. And you start to have this conversation. I'm like, you see now, you see doing parish missions or you see YouTube videos or you see a podcast and a lot of people can do that because of technology, but you don't see the work that goes, it goes into that. You don't see the preparation for certain talks. You don't see the studies, the personal reflection, the personal prayer time. And you just, you just see the, Oh man, you're moving people on. And I've got, I want that charism or I want that, um, that dynamic presentation. And it's just like, no, there's to your point at the beginning makes like, there's a, there's a, certain amount of fear associated with misleading people that people can hang on your words things that you say because there's going to be assumption right they're going to see us on a podcast a peace prophet king and they're going to assume like oh miko knows what he's talking about you could be an error you don't know that you could say something wrong we 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 try to check ourselves you know we have people in the comment box right makes i say you're doing this wrong and so we're going to constantly be looked at and judged but there's also going to be for those who are uh immature in their faith and i don't mean that negatively just you know further uh not not as far along as other people there's going to be those people that um that um take everything you say as gospel and there's going to be other people who criticize everything you say because they feel like they know more than you which they're going to be people that know more than us so we just have to i i think um so that first point of evangelization would be learn your faith because you can't give what you don't have yeah, I'd say my last my last little spiel would be um, really like when you're going to be presented with a lot of opportunities to evangelize and don't ever soften your language or soften the truth because you're not actually sa- saving that person or helping them. Because I, I get really tired of seeing, you know, I just saw a video of uh, a Bishop Barron talking with a Protestant who has a lot of followers and he says, should I become Catholic? And he says, yes, uh, you know, that's my blunt answer. It's like, yeah, it's super blunt, I guess. Okay. He says, yes. And he says, but I wouldn't want to push the issue because, you know, in, in Vatican II, any, anybody can be saved. Now, obviously that doesn't mean you will be saved, but anybody can be saved. And it's just like, well, you just, you just got rid of your first answer. Why does he need to become Catholic if anybody can be saved? That's not, it's just like, yeah. and we don't have to get into that because that could be a whole nother podcast. Yeah. But the idea is that you're going to be presented with some of these things. And I've been presented with, you know, why should I become Catholic? 
And sometimes you're not ready for that answer. And you could tell them I'm not ready for that answer. But mm-hmm. to say something like, yes, but don't worry, you can be saved regardless, you're leading people the wrong way. And you're going to have to pay for that. Yeah. The, this idea that anybody can go to heaven or all these people can do it, you know, or some of just these things that we do as Christians because we want to seem tolerant and we want to seem like we're meeting everybody where they are. Sometimes we're just misleading people. And so is it more important that their feelings aren't hurt or that we're actually leading them to heaven? And so that's the thing that you have to kind of balance. And obviously something that I need to grow in, because like I said, I'm extremely not confrontational. I won't even ask for water at the <laughs> restaurant because I don't want to, you know, bother those people or whatever. Um, I think a lot of times, like something I need to work on, you know, a couple of my best friends at home, they're not Catholic. And almost like I got to at some point say, listen, like, you guys got to become cat. Like, you know, you, this is the church that you'll be saved in. I'm sorry, but like, this is the one true church. And if you're not a part of that, then it's going to lessen your chances. And I, I think like, you know, if I really care about these people, you got to step up and say those things. Yeah. And, you know, and when I, and when I die, who's going to be responsible for that? If I was the only Catholic person in their lives and who's responsible for their self, who's responsible for at least sharing that part, not for their salvation, who's responsible for at least being that example, being that witness. If I if I didn't at least reach out to them and say, "Hey, this is the one true church," and you guys should really think about following it. If I don't at least say that, I'm responsible for that when I die, and I'm gonna yeah. have to answer for it. Yeah, it's interesting you bring that up, because the gospel reading for the day on the day that we're recording this kind of speaks to that when Jesus says, "You know, you put all these um, all all this weight on the people, but you didn't put you lift one finger to touch them or to help them, right?" And I think. It's our responsibility, as we said this before, right? It's our responsibility to inform, not to con- not to convince, right? So all we're saying is you present the truth. You put it in somebody's lap. And if somebody refuses that, rejects it, Jesus respects that, right? God allows one of the greatest gifts outside of our own life and our faith is free will. So, you know, we talk about, you know, when people talk about Vatican II, you know, the, the church proposes, never imposes. We can't force you. God doesn't force you. So what makes you think we're going to go ahead and replace that? But we're doing that person a disservice. When we think about our conversation, one of the episodes we're talking about no salvation outside the church. That is a church teaching, right? Does that mean we're going to put God in a box and, and could, God can work whatever way God wants to work? But the most uh, natural, most common way was through the church. That's why, or else why did he establish it, right? So um, for the people here in America, we have every opportunity. I mean, even for those that are in, um, uh, you know, more developed countries versus the people that are out in the sticks and don't have access to perhaps social media or whatever. It's our responsibility, as you said, Meeks, if we truly love that person, if we really are charitable, then we want to see their face in heaven. We want to see their soul in heaven. So um, by making the excuse that I don't want to be confrontational or I don't want to approach that, it's actually then more, it's indirect self-love, basically. You don't want to feel uncomfortable. You don't want to deal with the rejection. You don't want to deal with the discomfort of that confrontation. So then it's more about you than it is about their soul. Quite honestly, I have a saying, nobody's worth going to hell for. So, you know, that's something we all have to kind of think about. So I think just some common things like Meek said, don't soften your your language and don't be afraid to deliver the truth i think there's a way you can deliver a very hard truth and a very in a very palatable way in a way that's respectful and civil um even if they don't like it i just had that experience honestly in the last the last couple uh last couple of weeks where i delivered a super hard message i had a relationship with that person but i didn't i didn't mince any words i mean i gave it to them basically as about as upfront and honest as possible that their soul is at stake because of the souls that were entrusted to that this individual, and he's not making the right choices. He's not living a, a he's not living according to with the faith that he professed, and he happens to be one of those people that were, um, you know, kind of had the milk and honey experience with faith. But I didn't I didn't mince any words, and I just left it in his lap. I said, look, that's all my responsibility is to tell you the truth. And right now, you're headed to the path of hell, not the path of heaven. And I care enough about you to say something. So, Meeks, any last parting words? On evangelization yeah i think that's a, i think you brought up a good last point and uh, that's the idea i mean that's why we lost our conviction that's why no one's going to mass that's why no one's that's why no one's uh believing in the eucharist because all we want to do is just sound tolerant we just want to meet people where they are and that's it and make them feel heard and mm-hmm. the, it was just important things it's all important things but the end of the day is i'm sure when that person's really thinking about it in five or ten years he's gonna remember what you said dad He's not going to remember that person that was just confirming his already, his, his, I mean, you know, like whatever he was saying, whoever was just confirming him or whatever it is, he's not going to remember those things. Mm -hmm. He's going to remember that person that actually stuck up It said something. That's what you're going to remember. And that's what these people always remember. They're not going to remember the weak conversation that you kind of, 
you know, half butt gave him. Mm-hmm. Um, they're going to remember when he stood up for truth. So just keep doing that. You know, like we said, understand, keep learning your faith. And through your action, you should be evangelizing. And that's what we're all trying to do through our actions. Yeah. You know, just to kind of last thing on that note, man, we could talk about this for forever, but it, 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 we've come to a point in our time and culture where it's, it's more popular to virtue signal than to actually be virtuous. So that's to the point is like, rather than just being a, a virtue signaler, like actually once you grow in virtue. And I think that's the whole part where we're trying to call, convict people to the, the, the greatness they were designed for, they were made for. And that's really the whole point of this apostolate. We think about priest, prophet, king. We think about the, wor- the work we do at World of Blaze. We think about our everyday lives as saints in the making. We're striving for holiness. And, um, you know, that's what we're going to call people to. So, Meeks, what else we got? Yeah, the way you can evangelize through <laughs> social media is sharing our podcast and uh, following the Instagram, liking, commenting, all that good stuff. Yeah, and we ask that you continue to do that and you continue to share that with other people and let us know what you want to hear, you know what I mean? So um, if you can do us a favor, continue to pray for us, pray for our family, pray for the new lads, uh, Keone and Michelle, um, for their safety, and we'll continue to pray for you. So, hey, until next episode, get holy or die trying. Peace. <laughs>